it's this is the part where you know or hermosi language right i love how much mind share that guy is just stealing from everyone uh, anyway uh how to make offers so good people feel stupid saying no this is one of my favorite levels and stages because this is the stage where in the customer journey where you see by far the most conversion i really like that part of the customer journey <laughs> because it's where i've spent the most time got the most reps uh in in the business journey or uh, like you know business cycle of building business and everything and uh what's the phrase on the bottom present an offer that can't that can't be refused it's this is the part where you know or hermosi language right I love how much mind share that guy is just stealing from everyone. Uh, anyway, uh, how to make offers so good people feel stupid saying no. That's this conversation today. It's a good skill to have. All right. So outcome is present an offer that can't be refused. Uh, you're crazy if you say no. We're going to recap over the initial levels, one, two, and three. And then we're going to get into level four together today. Of course, we have copy. We have examples. And while we're going through these, hear me closely on two things. Number one. Uh, we're reviewing these levels because of, on, on purpose, repetition. I tell my kids this, if we do a lot of reps in a short period of time, it increases skill. A lot of reps, short period of time, increases skill. So when we spend the short amount of time during the week together, we want to keep providing those reps for you um, in the short period of time to increase skill. And we follow that pattern as well. Let's get into it. Level one is unaware. People don't know you exist. That's <laughs> People don't know you exist. Uh, Michael says it this way, your prospect has no knowledge of anything except perhaps his own identity or opinion. People love what they love. They hate what they hate. And if we talk about those things, they're like, hey, that's what I think love or hate. And so it's easy to meet them where they're at and communicate in that way. That's why that works. What are great ways to do that? Well, story leads is a great example. We all love stories. And the example we've gone through is with the headline is they laughed when I sat down at the piano, but when I started to play, what happened when you played? Did they laugh? Did they cry? Did they throw their chairs at you? Cause it was, you know, hurting their ear. Like what happened? So it's a good story headline uh, with very curiosity driven proclamation lead can be used in level one and also level two, uh, sometimes level three, but it's just this read this or die. It's like this big proclamation. It's very big. It's very bold. It's probably unrealistic in times. And, and it's, it's, you know, clickbait. <laughs> a lot of times our pro, uh, uh, proclamation leads, uh, those are examples. Okay. Level two. Now they're problem aware. They're, they're, they're thinking about more of just their opinions, thoughts, feelings. They've got, they're aware of their problem. My knee hurts. My elbow hurts. Um, I could once see now I can't see cause I got something in my eye or something happened. I got a problem. They know about it. Michael says it this way. Your prospect senses he has a problem, but doesn't know what to do about it. That's important. People in this stage uh, um, are in dread because they don't know if there is a solution. They might be thinking like, is this what my life's going to be like for the rest of my life? What do I do? Um, you know, there's, so there's no hope. There's just worry. Um, and a lot of times when you can come in, you know, lines can simply be saying like, oh, you're probably scared about this, maybe feel stuck here. And you might uh, have never, you know, didn't even know there was something that was available to you. You're not even selling a solution. You're just selling and talking about the possibility that there may be a solution. Meeting people where they're at at this stage can sound like that and grab their attention. This is important. In general, if you hear me say one thing today, it's like, okay, Chris, you talk through all these examples, you give some stories and say ridiculous things every once in a while. If you hear me say one thing, though, meeting people, like listening, practicing empathy, and creatively solving problems, those three things, listening, uh, practicing empathy, and creatively solving problems. Another way of saying those three things are treat people the way you want to be treated and listen to them and meet them where they're at. If you really do those things, it'll solve 90%. You, like, you don't need this tactic, that framework do it this way, make the air smell this way, turn the temperature down so they're a little cold and on edge and more likely, like all that can be strategic and like help. But if you, but 90, 95% of the things are just treating people the way you want to be treated uh, and, and uh, meeting them where they're at. And so on level two, to meet them where they're at, problem aware, being sympathetic, empathetic. I feel your pain. What I hear you saying is, and recite their pain. 
They don't care about you. They don't care about the solutions you have. They care, they want to be heard and they care about, you know, what they're struggling with. Let's meet them there. Okay. Can be done with sympathy. Um, the next thing that we'll cover is level three. Uh, and if you've missed the, I'm going, I'm doing my, my best to go through these quickly. If you want to have more detail on these def and you haven't seen them, go back uh, on the left-hand side into the pipeline copy vault and, and these pipeline strategy vault and, and watch the re uh, past recordings because we, we share more headline and we go into more detail. For level three, now they're solution aware. Ah, there's, we, we see the double rainbow, you know, like the sun shining, life's good. There's hope in the air again. Um, they're solution aware. Michael says it this way. Your prospect knows the result he wants or she wants, but not that your product provides it. So they know that they the result they want, but they don't know what products or services are the right ones for them to get it. To meet them where they're at, we're not going to be like, well, here's my product and here's my da 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 they just know the result they want. And so we need to talk about results. This is a good thing, to, good section to talk about results, which is why problem leads, you can see in the upper right-hand corner, it's kind of small, problem solution leads. That's why we want to have this conversation. If you have this problem and you want this result, check this out, because that's what they're thinking. They don't want to hear about your product name that like makes no sense to them. They want to hear about what they, the pain they have. They want to hear about the result they want to get which is why David has a great quote. When you advertise fire extinguishers, open with the fire. Talk about the fire. Man, you got your house is burning. I happen to have this thing that makes your fire go away. I know my house is on fire. I know that I want it to not be on fire, <laughs> right? That might sound silly, but that is how simple it is. And then when people are in level three of the buying journey, that's how we meet them where they're at and use words that connect like within a within five words, right? Within phrases and sentences, and then everything you say after that will will go down, um, you know, a better path for you. Okay, right. Take a screenshot. We go back and watch the other training video. We went through in, in problem solution leads at the solution aware stage five proven formats of how to write copy, and we had plenty of examples and campaigns that supported the if this then that. Right. If you have sinus infection, get Geritol or whatever the thing was. You know, I think Sean, you're like, some people were like, I had that, I had that. You know, whatever the 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 thing was. Actually, I think it was the the tablets, whatever. But you get the idea. Inversion was actually solution problem aware format. Identification and the question and instruction. Those are really really proven, powerful formats. And the pro copywriters when they're like, okay, I have this campaign. They start writing headlines within those formats. And sometimes the identification one's the best one. And sometimes it's if this, then that framework that ends up popping the hardest. You're going to want these tools in your tool belt when it comes to solution aware. Here's some examples. Do your hands and feet feel like blocks of ice? Problem. And then in really small blurry print, <laughs> discover nature's amazing all natural remedy for your poor circulation. I've got the result right uh, for you. Can't fall asleep, not staying asleep, waking up too early, never again. They're just saying that I, they're promising the result that you want. Having all these problems, never again. They, I, what is their product name? I have no idea. What's their company? I don't care. I just know that they have a solution that's going to get the result I want. And so that's how you say the same thing with less and meet people at the solution aware stage. Hopefully that becomes clear. All right, now we get to, um, with, with getting some more of those reps, which are very practical. This is why Sean, Sean and I go through this like unintentionally, or maybe, I mean, he's, he's intentional with like Napoleon Hill and like some piece of content, maybe he is here. I don't wanna speak for you in, incorrectly, Sean. But that being said, intentionally or unintentionally, Sean and I go through this framework at least once or twice a year and just comb through our offers and our copy and because it's good to get these reps. Now we get to move to product aware. This, I love this stage because now people are, you know, a little bit warmer and we can freaking get it done. We can bring the heat <laughs> and start uh, sharing some promises, being a little more bold, right? So we've got promise leads. All right, that being said, 
we're going to focus on what a promise lead is and how this can apply to your business and your copy. And where are headlines these days? Yes, yes, the subject line of an email. Um, it's the first three to five words in any DM you send. That is a headline. That's very valuable digital real estate. Uh, what else is it? Well, of course, any piece of content, short or medium form, long form that you're putting out there, all of these are the words that we use, which can be the words that are used to sell. And these frameworks are really important, learning from the best. A promise of a, so what is it? A promise of a benefit, which is unique and competitive. Sean, what are the good things to say? Is it better, faster, more? No, 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 no. We don't want to say those things. We want unique, rare, disruptive, you know, revolutionary, um, you know, things along the nature uh, that are more pattern interrupt driven. You've never thought of this or heard of this before. That kind of stuff. like, whoa, what is it? I'm curious, right? That kind of stuff. What it also is, is a reason why people should buy from you. Sometimes it's like, well, that's cool, but I can get that anywhere. Like, why you? And when you have a good answer to that, they're like, that's a good point. In fact, this is <laughs> implement this just in your like even personal life. You know, if you're waiting in line anywhere and you just, you're at Starbucks and you want to cut the line. If you ask, Hey, do you mind if I just like go in front? I'm like in a hurry, your family emergency, whatever. If you give them an explanation after the ask there, I don't know the exact percentage, but it's like 60 to 70% higher probability that they'll say yes, just because you had a reason for asking. It, hang with me on this. This is why this is really powerful and funny. Um, hey, do you mind if I cut the line? I just, I really want to. <laughs> like, even though that sounds ridiculous, more people will say yes to you just because that's your reason and you gave a reason. So how do we apply that to sale? Like, why you? Just have a reason. Even if it's not that good, uh, make that a part of your process and your pattern. All right, next one. Something you must be able to deliver. You can't, if you can't deliver, then you're actually lying to people. And, and for whatever you gain, it'll be just, it'll, you'll lose it just as fast. I don't, you know, with this crowd, I don't have to harp on that too hard. I know you guys are with me on that. Who is it for? Product aware prospects. Of course, your prospect knows what you sell. They know the, the pain they have. They know the result they want, and they're, they're aware of your product, right? So now we're telling them why us, right? Um, works well with on the fence prospects. So they know all these things, but we've all, I mean, right now, just think about the, the recent sales calls that you've had. You're thinking of their name, you know, you see their face and they're on the fence. They're like, and you know, they're the, you know, they're the right fit. They know they're the right fit for crying out loud. It's like, why aren't they buying? I, I, <laughs> I, I was just uh, to be on the other side. This is a funny story. It's for like this other mastermind and all these other like founders and, you know, yeah, you know, executives and blah, blah, blah. And, and the guy was like hard selling me so freaking hard. Uh, Sean, this is like this one out of Florida and he's just hard selling so hard. I'm like, and he's, I'm like thinking of all the frameworks he's using on me. Cause I just like sales and the game and the structure. <laughs> I was like, oh, he's really good. And I know I'm the perfect fit. He knows I'm the perfect fit. Why am I not buying? So anyway, people on the fence, throwing some bigger promise leads can help them be like, all right, well, he, he said he's going to deliver for me on this. Like, you know, she's going to deliver for me here. Like, let's do it. Okay. Here's what they must include. Biggest benefit is, is great. So, well, you know, that's a relative term. So how do you know that? Well, how much market research have you done? I've done, and some of you have probably done quite, quite a bit, but here, let me give you at least a workflow that I really, really like around this bullet point. Uh, I'm a big fan of Miro, like digital whiteboard. I mean, you can use whatever actual whiteboard or digital one you want, but the exercises I'll go through and, and doing it this way, I have found to be helpful. I don't just like think of the names of the companies. I'll go to their website. I'll go to their social profiles. I'll review their copy and I'll take screenshots of all of it. And I'll put it in one Miro board and I'll look at, Ooh, look at their offer. Look at their customer journey. I will study the market. I know what, what helps if you're looking for your voice and your, and how, where, and how you're unique, because being unique and rare is even a relative term, unique and rare compared to what you, you, you doing that due diligence sets you far apart because I promise 95% of your competitors have never done that. 
Maybe some of you are here today or you're watching this recording later and you're like, Chris, I've never done that. <laughs> it's okay. You know, there was a point where we'd, we'd never done it. But with the product and service and offerings that we bring to market and, and companies that we form, we go through this process and then we revisit the process. And so you're grabbing their screenshots, you're reviewing their copy, you're looking at not what they say, but the order in which they say it and how you find somebody. And, and you can see the experience that's being created. Then you can start to form your unique and rare offering that fills in the gaps. You guys with me on that? All right, let's, okay, let's keep flowing. Uh, matches prospects core desires, right? It's on par with meeting them where they're at, sounding new and original. Again, if you know what they're used to hearing in the market, then you'll know what angle to take um, in the market to actually fulfill on being new and original. Be bold. Don't be afraid to be bold. You know, why, why do we all buy products and service? This is a good note on bold. Why do we all buy products and services? This, this shocked me and I because I never really viewed it this way until a few years ago. I'm like, well, you know, I'm, I'm solving problems and I'm getting rid of, I'm running away from pain. Uh, I'm paying for speed. That's a good answer. You know, I want to go faster. A big thing that's not always articulated is people are buying confidence. I, in other words, I believe more in this person and this system than I do in myself. And there's stages in our journeys where we're learning and we don't have that, that confidence built. And there's parts of, there's parts of like our own story and growing Flowchat. The company that we are, are becoming and going to be scares me a little bit. It's because I haven't been to that level. And so how you partner and who you surround yourself with to borrow some of that confidence allows you to be bold, right? And, and so when you're serving the market, do we want to buy from anyone that's not bold and not confident and unsure and hesitant? Of course not, right? So I know this is very simple. I know you guys all know this, but I think this is something that's really important to go over when it pertains to a promise lead. If you don't have a bold promise, then it's like, it's a really weak promise, right? All right, followed with even bigger proof. You know, social proof, look at all these people that have win and you can too. And you're constantly thinking about increasing someone's standard of living. How do you do it? Well, how long does it take? Speed matters, size matters. We'll skip all kinds of jokes and quality of results. Quality of results like is probably the biggest, right? And the most important. You get results, you take care of people, you treat other people the way that you want to be treated. And usually your marketing and your sales and the people in your community actually just do all the selling for you, right? Get that compound effect. All right, awesome. So these are some very important bullet points to include in your promise lead. Oops, let's look at some examples. Check this out. A Hollywood smile in three days or your money back. How do I lose? I'm gonna get the result I want. It's, it's a very descriptive smile. It's like, hey, do you want a good smile? It's like, oh, that sounds stupid. Hollywood smile, you know, fame, all the, you know, rich, pretty people. Cool, I get it. Yeah, like the top of the top. Let's get that one. In less than three days, that seems attainable. Or if I don't deliver, there's no risk to you, money back. I know you guys understand the framework and this isn't new to you. So this is a great example of a very solid promise lead. I know what I get. I know what time frame I get it. And, and it's a, a risk reversal. I have no risk. How do I say no to this? I don't. <laughs> All right. So we're going to end here today. The FBI formula. Coined by yours truly, Sean Malone. <laughs> the FI formula. This, this is something, uh, we like frameworks. This is a great framework to create a promise lead. Feature, right, is for F. What are, you, uh, what are your best product features? Now, hear me closely. There's going to be what you think, and what you think might also be what your customer thinks. You know, you're, uh, but hop, hop on the call. Uh, we have baked into our process where we're, we'll randomly reach out to people and just jump on a one-on-one -on -one call. How's it going? You know, what are you getting stuck with? A uh, conversation I had last week, he was like, gosh, I love this part. This is what I got. And you know, why I got jumped, I jumped on with flow chat, but here was, here's a couple of things that I bumped in, in, into my, you know, initial journey getting started. I was like, oh, even though we had the resources, um, he was struggling to leverage them and, and find them. And so how do we, make them more visible and easier to find, you know, being obsessive about 
of what people are needing and wanting and how to get them that to them faster are the best product features and simply just reaching out to them and asking them. So if you don't currently have one actionable takeaway, if you don't actively have one-on-one -on -one calls, you get so much more out of a call than you do just text or email, although doing that compared to nothing is better. But if you can do just that, no pressure call, not, I'm not calling you to upsell you or get more out of you, like just doing the thing to like check in, due diligence, it's worth it. It's far more expensive to acquire new than it is to retain old or current, right? So that's a great way to discover feature. All right, let's talk about benefit. What benefit does this feature provide to your client? Being clear about that. Um, what's a good example? Sometimes, have you ever been on those calls or watched those webinars or VSLs and they're talking about how great everything is and how happy everyone is and you're like, I don't even know what you said. Like, what are we even talking about? Are we talking about emailing? Are we talking about, you know, like cold call? Like, I don't know what you're saying. Being clear about the benefit and just saying that directly can be very, very powerful in a promise lead so they know what's being promised. Lastly, impact, I for impact. What will be the resulting, uh, well, uh, what will be the result when your client uses this feature? So, hey, here's the feature, here's the benefit, and here's what life is going to be like when you have this result, you know, you're going to be taller, you're going to be more tan, you're going to be like, what, you know, here's, here's how people will view you. Here's what they'll say. Here's where your business will be at. And now you'll finally be able to delegate and you'll actually be doing triple the amount of revenue with half the amount of time. Can you imagine it? Like, wow, I can barely imagine it. Like that's going to be the result, the impact uh, that, you know, will affect their standard of living and be a big deal. So here's a framework you can borrow, the FBI formula in creating promise leads. And that is what we have for level four today.